Down goes Blake Trinan. We have an update on the Dodgers reliever. Emmett Sheehan will start the season on the IL. Who will be the Dodgers' fifth starter? And Blake Snell, the Angels. All that more coming up next here on Dodgers Dugout. It's time for Dodger baseball. A great strike three. Dodgers have won it all in 2020. Mookie Betts. Craig Sheehan. I don't care how many times this team rips my heart out, I'll never stop loving the Los Angeles Dodgers. Think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out. What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here, credential member of Dodgers Media. Friends call me DMAC. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Now, if you haven't yet, do me a huge favor and subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button. And also comment done down below so you'll be eligible for our next giveaway when we hit 90,000 subscribers. So we haven't announced what it's going to be yet, but you'll be eligible if you comment down below. Also, I want all your fire takes, too, on a scale of 1 to 10. What is your concern level with Blake Trinan? How significant do you think this injury could be? What will the Dodgers do if he has to miss time? Who do you want to plug in there? Also, who should be the Dodgers fifth starter? Do you want to see Michael Grove? Do you want to see Kyle Hurt? Do you want to see Gavin Stone? Do you want to see Ryan Yarbrough? Should they go trade for a guy? Should they sign someone? I want all your takes about the Dodgers fifth rotation spot. And also, what does your gut tell you about Blake Snell? Does he end up in Anaheim? And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. Okay, so you want the good news or the bad news? The bad news? Okay, let's dive right into it. Today, Dodgers reliever Blake Trinan left Saturday afternoon's game against the Rangers after taking a line drive from Rangers catcher Sam Huff off his right ribs. It was a scary scene with Trinan immediately falling to the ground, but thankfully he did walk off under his own power, and we did receive an update right after the game. This is from Fabian Ardaya, who tweeted out, the Dodgers are calling it a right rib contusion. Blake Trinan is getting a CT scan in addition to the X-ray Dave Roberts said they'll know more tomorrow. So you have to hope this is nothing serious. You have to hope this isn't a cracked rib, a broken rib. That could lead to 8 to 10 weeks, something along those lines. And yes, 8 to 10 weeks, that would set him back, but... At least it wasn't off his face. At least it didn't hit him in his arm. At least it didn't lead to something that's a little more serious that could leave him out for an extended period of time. But make no mistake about it. If it is a broken rib, this would be a major setback because Blake Trinan, he's looked dialed in this spring. In three and two-thirds innings, he's allowed just a pair of hits. He's had two punch outs. He's looked really, really sharp. The break on the slider, the feel for the slider, it's back. And he's someone that velocity-wise, stuff-wise, he can help this team. And the Dodgers, they bet on him back in November when they exercised his $1 million option to be back for the 2024 season after he had pitched in just six innings combined over the past two seasons as he battled with shoulder injury. So you have to hope this is nothing serious because I had high hopes on Blake Trinan. The organization has a firm belief that he's going to have an impact and he's going to contribute for this team. And I talked to Blake Trinan at Dodger Fest and asked him, what is the most important thing thing for you to have success this season and here's what he told me and Blake outside of health waiting is the biggest key to you getting back to being the dominant reliever you were earlier in your Dodgers career I think just getting reps honestly uh, you know my body my arm on it I have zero uh, discomfort when I throw so the biggest thing is just trying to retrain myself to hit the certain mechanical cues I've done in the past and I'm doing a great job right now so it's just building off that and then uh, you know we've got spring training hopefully have a chance to make that roster in Korea we've got so many great arms that are going to be vying for spots so um, yeah just trying to trying to show them I can still contribute thanks Blake so if you've ever talked to Blake Trinan, one of the things about this guy is he fully believes in himself. He has all the confidence that he is one of the very best high leverage relievers in the game. And that's exactly what he expected himself to be this season for the Dodgers. He knows that people have written him off. He knows that people think that he's damaged goods and that he'll never get back to being that high leverage weapon that he was back in 2021. But he truly believed heading into this year that he could get back to that. And look, I've been bullish on Blake because 
I've been at those bullpen sessions and I've seen hitters respond to him and how they react to his stuff. And look, when he's on his stuff, more movement than a military family, right? His stuff is nasty. This is someone that absolutely, when he's right, is one of the best relievers in the sport. Top 10 to 15 when everything is in line. So hopefully this is nothing serious, but we'll give you an update as soon as we learn anything tomorrow morning. And then the other big injury news we got this morning is that Dodgers pitcher Emmett Sheehan, someone who was entering camp with a really good chance of being the Dodgers' fifth starter with Walker Buehler out to start the season. Well, he's going to join Walker Buehler. He will not start the season on the Dodgers' active roster. A couple weeks ago, Dave talked about the shoulder soreness that he was dealing with, having faced Shohei Otani in live BP sessions. He talked about how he was pushing it a little much. And look, Emmett Sheehan, from a stuff perspective, he's got a four-seam fastball that is as explosive as any four-seam fastball in the organization. He also put a 10 to 15 pounds of muscle on this offseason to take on the rigors of being a starting pitcher at the big league level. And when I was down at Camelback Ranch, you just got the sense that things just weren't going right for Emmett Sheehan. He faced Shohei Otani in a live BP session. You could feel the adrenaline pump, and he gave it everything he had. He was emptying the tank there, and that set him back. And that's understandable. You're facing Shohei Otani, but then he was shut down for a week after developing that shoulder soreness early during spring training, and he didn't resume a throwing program until Saturday, March 2nd. So he only started throwing again last Saturday, and it was clear that he was not going to be a part of this Dodgers rotation when they started the season against the Padres, that it was going to take some time to get him back into the groove, to get him healthy, and hopefully this is not something that lingers, hopefully this is not something that's serious, but let's also remember that this is someone that has not pitched more than 10 innings at the Triple A level. He was a rare Double A call-up last season when the Dodgers were desperate for starting pitching after they were decimated by injuries, and he made the most of it. He was fantastic in his Dodgers debut, was flirting with a no-hitter there, and then had his ups and downs, had an ERA close to five. He did make the Dodgers postseason roster. He came in for Clayton Kershaw. It was a tough spot, gave up some runs, but that experience, he told me, really helped him heading into this offseason and just getting that experience at the big league level and being thrusted into a situation, a little bit of baptism by fire, he definitely handled it well and his stuff, it shines, right? It was evident just how good that four-seam fastball, how electric his stuff can be, but he's going to be on the shelf for a minute here. And the big question now is, who is going to be the Dodgers' fifth starter? And for a long time, it felt like, okay, it's going to be Gavin Stone. And I still think it's going to be Gavin Stone. I think he's earned it. He's looked so much better during spring training. You're not seeing just a four-seam fastball change-up repertoire. He's expanded that. You're seeing the sinker. You're seeing the cutter. You're seeing a deeper mix, him working east and west, getting strikes early in counts. Hitters aren't sitting on that changeup, and he's working in the zone, and it's helping his cause. He's another guy that ate Chipotle all offseason, and he added a ton of muscle. He's looking swole. By the way, I wonder if he was getting the guacamole. Maybe not. Maybe after a couple arbitration years, maybe after that big contract, he can afford the guacamole at Chipotle. But right now, the most important thing is he's more effective. The command's been better. You're seeing the changeup tumble out of the zone, but then you're also seeing him work it in the zone. You're seeing the east-west. Just hitters are not sitting on that changeup, right? He's not someone that's relying on just those two pitches to be effective, and I definitely think there's a decent chance that he's a strong fifth starter for the Dodgers. I'm very, very excited to see what he can do for this rotation this season. Gavin Stone, rocky starts last year. I think this year he cements himself in stone as someone that, you know what, I can live up to that hype. And you also look at Michael Grove because Michael Grove, he's looked downright bad during certain stretches this spring, but today he looked great. And that is the Michael Grove experience. Sometimes you're thinking, okay, it's Grover. And other times you're saying to yourself, wow, this guy's got something. Filthy breaking ball, 95 to 97 mile per hour fastball. And today he was very, very impressive in his opportunity. He allowed just a single and a walk and pitched three and a third scoreless innings. And he ends up striking out six of the 12 batters that he faced. He induced eight swinging strikes. That slider was sliding. It was sharp. It had depth to it. And I was very, very impressed with Michael Grove. And Michael Grove has told me that, look, I just want to be on this team. 
I just want to help this team win any way I can. He's also said, look, I like the feeling coming out of the bullpen. The adrenaline, the routine, the stuff plays up, the command's better, the velocity's better. But he's also shown for stretches where, man, he looks good on the mound. And if he can command it, if he can get the depth of that secondary pitch, and he can put it all together, there's no reason why he can't have success as a number five starter. And then Doc also said that Kyle Hurt is in the mix as well. And Kyle Hurt, he hasn't pitched deep into these games, a couple innings every time he gets an opportunity, but Kyle Hurt is a very talented young pitcher. He can work in the zone from a stuff-wise perspective. If Stone, Hurt, and Grove if they're all on at a 10 out of 10, you could make the case that Kyle Hurt at a 10 out of 10 is better than both of them. That's how dominant his stuff has the potential of being because he can work in the zone, right? He doesn't need to paint the corners. He doesn't need to nibble. If his mechanics are right, and that's what he told me. He says, look, if my mechanics are sound and I'm throwing strikes, good things are going to happen. Hurt's so good, right? So three really exciting choices for the Dodgers. And Dave Roberts has already said that Ryan Yarbrough is going to start the season as a swing man. They like him in that role. So you could consider that as well. But look, right now you look at the starting rotation. You got Yamamoto as the ace at number one. You got Tyler Glass now at two. You got Bob Miller at three. James Paxton at four. And then five, it's a Stone Grove Hurt battle for that fifth spot. And then you look at the bullpen. Evan Phillips, Bruce Dark Gratterall. Ryan Brazier, Joe Kelly, those guys are locks. Blake Trinan, if he's healthy, he's a lock. Ryan Yarbrough, he's going to be on this team. He has no options. Alex Vesia, he is the lefty that they've trusted for years now. He, You have to assume that he's going to make it. Daniel Hudson, Dave said, is going to make it at some point. He had two strikeouts today, so he's continued to ramp up and look good. And then you got Wilson. He's impressed during certain stretches, but right now, the odd man out, who's it going to be? Because J.P. Fireisen is also going to be in there as well. So I think where this bullpen is, they're pretty much set. It's just a matter of does Blake Trinan avoid an injury here or do you have to plug someone in with that? And also, let's say Blake Trinan's out and then Gavin Stone's the number five starter. Do you have Michael Grove as a reliever? Do you have Kyle Hurt as a reliever? So I think that those guys, you want to see them at the AAA level getting the starts and the innings that they need. But I think it just depends on how this team breaks camp from an injury standpoint. Does everyone stay healthy? But they're still in pretty good shape. You just have to avoid injuries and hope that these guys just continue to ramp up and get ready for the season. But I like this bullpen. I think they're going to be a strength. And it's just like we see every season, can they stay healthy? But look, you're still throwing out a young, inexperienced pitcher as your number five, right? So look, the great Aristotle once said, you can never have enough pitching. And there's a pitcher out there that's still unsigned. And a lot of you want to see him in Dodger Blue. And his name is Blake Snell. And we have a big Snellzilla update. And this comes from my friend, Mr. Buster Olney of ESPN, who said that Blake Snell will sign with the Angels based on conversations with people who know Blake and Snell's apparent enjoyment of pitching in Southern California. I'm hearing that Blake Snell's preference, strong preference, is to go to the Angels. And look, there has been back and forth with that team that's where I think he's going to land so feels like right now Blake Snell is going to be an angel and I think it makes sense right the angels need pitching they haven't invested enough in pitching and he likes pitching in Southern California so is it going to be on a multi-year deal I'm guessing it is because they've been in conversations for months now that's been the talk around the league so if you were hoping to get Blake Snell on a one-year deal or a multi-year deal with opt-outs after every year, it's highly unlikely. Based on people I've talked to, it's not a realistic option at this point, but it is the Dodgers, right? You never know until that player is signed if, hey, everything crumbles with the Angels, boom, pivot to the Dodgers, right? You just never know with this organization. You can never count them out because what they have is the almighty dollar, right? They can flex that financial muscle whenever they need to, so I'm sure... If they could get him and he falls in their lap at the right price, why wouldn't they consider, right? Yes, at 110% surcharge because they're past that Cohen tax, right? They're right there in the four, past the four T at 297 million. Everything above that is 110% charge. And they're right now they're at 302 million if you look at roster resources for their salary. So it's highly unlikely that they're going to end up with Blake Snell. But I do find it interesting. William Adams has been absent from the Brewers' line. 
lineup last couple of days. I'm still hoping for a Willie Adamas to the Dodgers trade. But, hey, let's get greedy. Greed is good. It's definitely good when it comes to baseball. But that's going to do it for this episode of Dodgers Dugout. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. If you haven't yet, do me a huge favor and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Hit that like button. Comment done down below along with all of your comments and all things Dodger baseball. So you are eligible for our next giveaway at 90K. I want to thank you guys for always watching. Watching, always listening. You guys are the reason why this channel is where it is. Hey, it's your show. I'm just hosting, like I always say. But that's good for this episode. Remember, nothing brings together quite like Dodger baseball. Until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.